The Office of Bilingual Education and World Languages of the New York State Education Department presents this next workshop in its 2022 professional learning series. Assessment Part 1, Creating Standards Aligned Rubrics for Performance Assessment Tasks. This webinar is offered free of charge for world language educators and administrators working and studying in New York State educational institutions. This session will provide an orientation to exemplar rubrics for each of the five New York State Learning Standards for World Languages. Presenters will offer guidance for creating four-point, three-point, or single-point rubrics to assess performance tasks aligned with the proficiency targets at each checkpoint. Participants will learn how to use rubric templates along with the master rubric document to create their own customized rubrics. Our workshop presenters today are Bill Heller, Dr. Joanne O'Toole, and Dr. Lori Langer de Ramirez. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to invite Bill, Joanne, and Lori to begin this workshop. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This afternoon's webinar is Assessment Part 1, Creating Standards-Aligned Rubrics for Performance Assessment Tasks. Before we get started, I want to remind you about the upcoming professional learning opportunities part two of the assessment webinars, um, creating formative and summative performance assessment tasks will take place on Tuesday, October 11th from 4 to 5 p.m. Then we have two webinars on lesson planning, lesson planning part one from unit plan to lesson plans, putting the pieces together, Tuesday, November 1st, 4 to 5 p.m and part two lesson planning options for thematic units on Tuesday, December 13th, 4 to 5 p.m. And again, CTLE credits are available for your participation live or recorded if you complete the quiz um, that accompanies the recording. And of course, all sessions are recorded. For this session, you will um, use these symbols we remind everyone to mute your microphone where you see that blue thought bubble is the invitation to think alone. Where you see the chat icon that's where you're invited to enter your thinking or questions into the chat box and wherever you see the little folder icon that means that we have placed content in the Google folder that you see on the slide. There are three goals that accompany today's workshop. First, I can identify qualities and benefits of rubrics. Secondly, I can identify how rubrics provide feedback and assessment of student performance. And finally, I can create customized rubrics for standards-based performance tasks. So to get started, I invite you to think about general rubric design. What comes to mind when you think about the design of a rubric? I suspect that you envision this grid or one similar to it and one or more dimensions to be assessed in the far left hand column and a continuum of performance levels moving horizontally across the top. And you probably are also thinking about the descriptors that go into each of those light blue shaded boxes. These descriptors are qualitative in nature, qualitative descriptions of performances for each dimension that have clear distinctions between the levels. And qualitative, of course, refers to the characteristics of the performance, not the number of items to be counted. That would be quantitative. And quantitative doesn't need to be part of a rubric because you as a teacher can just count it. So here's an example, one you may very well be familiar with. It comes from the old second language proficiency exam, and it's a writing rubric. And what do we see? We see three dimensions to be assessed. In this case, purpose and task, vocabulary, structure and conventions. We see a continuum of performance levels, a four, a three, a two, a one. And 
in each one of those boxes, we see qualitative descriptions of performances for each dimension, again with clear distinctions between the levels. So why rubrics? Well, I love this quote from Shrum and Glisten. Rubrics show learners what good performance looks like even before they perform an assessment task. I would add, it's not just learners who have access to the transparency around expectations, but others. The teacher, the teacher and the students both know what's expected. Colleagues, maybe we're sharing an assessment. Administrators who may be looking at the assessments implemented in our classrooms, or even perhaps families who wonder what it is that their students are supposed to be able to do. Wiggins and Tai in their Understanding by Design book had this quote, assessment is the giving and using of feedback against standards to enable improvement and the meeting of goals. So what standards in our case? Well, of course, the revised New York State Learning Standards for World Languages, which you can see here both for modern languages and classical languages on the screen. Revisiting that quote, assessment is the giving and using of feedback against standards to enable improvement in the meeting of goals. Well, what would we draw on for the feedback? Oops, our New York State World Language Performance Indicators. You can actually see on the performance indicators, it's almost already set up like a rubric where we see the range of performances expected at the various proficiency sublevels for each one of the standards that we identified on the previous slide. So with that in mind, what does a world language standards-based rubric design look like? Just as you might have imagined, it has the various levels of performance as defined in the performance indicators. It still has dimensions to be assessed, but they're standards informed. So based on the interpretive, interpersonal, um, presentational, and then of course our culture standards. And the continuum is a continuum of proficiency sublevels. And our descriptors of performances are proficiency informed. Again, for each dimension with clear distinctions between sublevels. So feedback, feedback is an inherent element of world language standards-based rubrics. So imagine I have evaluated a performance by one of my students and that student performed at the intermediate low level for each one of the dimensions of the given standard that I was assessing them on. What they were able to do in the sublevels preceding intermediate low, which of course would be novice mid, novice high, plus what they can do at intermediate low is feedback to the learner and to the teacher and others on what the learner can do with language. What follows in this case at the intermediate mid and intermediate high level is feedback on what the learner cannot yet do with language. In other words, these criteria serve to inform goal setting towards proficiency development. So what are some benefits of world language specific rubrics? As I've already alluded to, transparency. They transparently communicate standards-based expectations to students and others 
prior to beginning a performance task and they do it with very friendly language. They provide an opportunity for students to self-assess their progress towards the proficiency target. Remember the feedback of what they can and cannot yet do and what they cannot yet do an opportunity for the goal setting. They provide common language for offering proficiency based feedback, guidance and reinforcement. It's language that can be shared by the teacher, by the students, by colleagues, by all of the stakeholders. And when used over time and across multiple students, they allow the teacher to accumulate meaningful data that can help evaluate both the task, the curriculum, student learning, proficiency development, and of course, instruction. And finally, they provide data that support equitable assessment practices. We are evaluating all of our students according to the same criteria. Now I'll turn it over to Bill, who will introduce you to our master rubrics. Thanks, Joanne. To help teachers who wish to align their assessment practices to the New York State Standards and Performance Indicators, we've created a set of master rubrics from which teachers can find proficiency-informed descriptors to use in their own feedback instruments. These rubrics were inspired by examples from other state states and organizations that are listed at the end of the master rubrics document, but have been specifically tailored for the to align with the New York State standards. There are two sets of documents in the handouts folder today. The first are the master rubric documents. There is one for modern languages of all categories and a second for classical languages. The master rubric document contains a brief explanation of how to use them, the rubrics themselves, and several completed examples. The second set of documents are templates. There is one set of four template documents for modern languages and one set of four template documents for classical languages. This document contains blank templates for single point, three point, and four point rubrics, along with all of the master rubrics from which you may copy and paste all in one single document. The file marked complete has all of the templates, but if you only want to use, say, four point rubrics in your department, then there's a document that only has the four point templates along with the master rubrics. Let's take a tour of the rubrics. Here's the master rubric for standard one, interpretive communication. Learners understand, interpret, and analyze what is heard, read, received, or viewed on a variety of topics using a range of diverse texts, including authentic resources. You'll notice the symbol we use for standard one has indicates that this is the input standard. The input is coming in toward the learner. In creating these rubrics, we began with the performance indicators for each standard. You see here at the top of the performance indicators for standard one. The rubrics break down each performance indicator into one or more dimensions, along with qualitative descriptors for each targeted sublevel. These descriptors are designed to give the learners specific objective feedback on their performance using simple learner friendly language. So for the performance indicator for standard one for intermediate low, you can see a corresponding set of rubric descriptors on the master rubrics. Let's take a closer look at standard one. Each rubric is structured similarly to the rubric for standard one. First, you have the standard. Next, you have the proficiency targets for each checkpoint and course. 
the modern language master rubrics list the targets for both category one and category two languages, as well as category three and category four languages. The classical language master rubrics also break out the proficiency targets by the skills addressed within each standard. Regardless of what level you're teaching, you'll be able to find the descriptors on the master rubric for your targeted proficiency sublevel. For each standard, there are one to seven dimensions identified. For interpretive communication, we've identified four dimensions understanding, vocabulary, communicator's purpose, and text organization. You will notice the gray boxes on some of the columns at the lower sublevels. There is no language for some dimensions at some sublevels because performances for learners at that level would not be expected to independently demonstrate those dimensions. So it would not be expected that you could give a text to a novice learner and expect them to identify communicator's purpose or text organization on their own independently without the type of scaffolding or prompting that can be done in guided lessons. Here's a master rubric for uh, standard two. Learners interact and negotiate meaning in spontaneous spoken, visual, and written communication to exchange information and express feelings, preferences, and opinions. Notice our standard two symbol indicates that this is a two-way exchange of uh, communication. For this rubric, there are, oops, there are seven dimensions, communication, which is task completion, discourse type, vocabulary, expression, comprehensibility, control, and understanding. Again, the descriptions for each dimension are aligned to each actual sublevel. Both the rubric for standard two and the rubric for standard three begins with the dimension of communication. In other words, how well does the learner complete the task using the targeted language function? You'll notice that the language in the master rubric is the same for this dimension across all sublevels. In other words, it is expected that regardless of the sublevel targeted, the learner is expected to complete the assigned task using the targeted language function. We'll later see how this language could be modified when using three or four point rubrics to give feedback. The rubric for standard three, presentational performance tasks. This rubric has six dimensions. They are communication again, identical to standard two, discourse type, vocabulary, comprehensibility, control, and organization. We see that organization is not an independent expectation for novice mid-learners and then begins to emerge at the novice high level as described in the rubric. Assessing standards four and five, the culture standards, does, doesn't require additional or separate tasks. Instead, ideally, we can demonstrate or, or design our tasks that assess standards one, two, and three to be able to enable learners to demonstrate the performance indicators for standards four and five. Language from the master rubrics for culture standards four and five can be added to rubrics tailed, tailored to your specific performance tasks. We'll show you examples of how this works. For now, for standard four, language learners use the target language to identify, describe, and explain the practices and products of the cultures studied, as well as the cultural perspectives they suggest. On this rubric, there's just two dimensions. The first for cultural products and practices. The second, cultural perspectives. Remember, these reflect expectations for what students are able to do independently in the target language. 
identify at the novice level, describe at the intermediate levels, moving toward explain at the intermediate high level. Standard 5 learners use the target language to compare the products and practices of their own cultures and their own, uh, of the culture studied and their own. Standard 5 has just one dimension, that of making cultural comparisons. Again, we can choose to include this dimension or dimensions from Standard 4 on any task that assesses Standards 1, 2, or 3 when it seems feasible to include it. Okay, we're going to move on to how to use the master rubrics to design your own customized rubrics. Stick with me here, and hopefully it will fall into place. To make your own customized rubrics, you're going to use the template documents that are in the folder. For any performance task you design, you can create a customized rubric calibrated to the proficiency target of your course. You can customize the rubrics to suit the task by selecting those dimensions that the task will allow the students to perform. You can create single point, three point, or four point rubrics. Simply copy and paste from the master rubrics into blank templates. Let's create a single point rubric for a presentational task targeted to intermediate low proficiency. So in this case, we're going to create a single point rubric for a category one or two language at the checkpoint B level two level, level two. So the first year of checkpoint B. The performance target for the first year of checkpoint B is intermediate low for category one and two languages. We're going to create a rubric for standard three presentational communication, and we're going to include an assessment of standard four relating cultural practices and products to perspectives. The can-do statement we're aligning this task to is, I can describe weekend plans. And the task is to create a comic strip in which characters from a target language country describe their plans for the weekend. Here's the template for creating a single point rubric for a presentational task. Notice it has six dimensions for the, from the presentational rubric already written in. It also has all of the dimensions from standards four and five there for you. You will see how we can delete any dimensions that aren't demonstrated in our performance tasks. On a single point rubric, we can copy and paste only the rubric language for the targeted proficiency sublevel. On the left, you see a column marked with a triangle, also called a delta, the scientific symbol for change. There we provide space for the teacher to note feedback to help the students who haven't yet demonstrated the targeted level of performance to make improvements. On the right, you see the plus sign. Here's where teachers can note feedback on how the student's performance has exceeded the target proficiency level or make suggestions for the, how the students can level up on their next performance. How do we turn the template into a customized rubric? First, we identify the proficiency level we need. For this presentational task, for level two of a category one or two language, our proficiency target is intermediate low. Remember, these targets are written right on the master rubrics. In this task, we're going to expect students to describe cultural products and practices, the first dimension of standard four. This specific task won't readily allow students to describe cultural perspectives or make cultural comparisons on their own, so we can delete those rows from the template. To make our master rubric, to make our rubric, we copy intermediate low column from the standard three presentational master rubric, and then we 
paste it into the template. Then we go to the standard four rubric and copy only the first dimension for intermediate low and paste it in the customized template. Et voila, we have a customized rubric for our performance task. Here is a second example. What would a three-point rubric for an interpersonal task for level two look like? So in this case, we have an interpersonal task for level two targeted in an intermediate low, along with a standard four relating cultural practices and products to perspectives. Our can-do statements are, I can make, accept, and politely refuse invitations. I can make excuses. Our task, you and your partner have very busy schedules and lots of interests. You want to get together sometime this weekend. Discuss your weekend plans. Try to find a time you can do something together. Here is our completed three-point rubric. In addition to copying the rubric descriptors for the targeted sublevel of intermediate low, you also copy the descriptors for the adjacent sublevel below to the left and the adjacent sublevel above, in this case intermediate mid, to the right. Here you can see how we had to modify the language for the first dimension for communication. For any assessment, the target is to complete the task using the targeted language function. So that's the language from the master rubric. To the left, we have modified the descriptor with the words mostly. And to the right, we've modified the descriptor with the words complete and expand upon. we can also create a four-point rubric for the same interpersonal task. Here you see an example of a four-point rubric. Four-point rubrics include the target proficiency sublevel in the third column. To the right, we paste one sublevel above the target, in this case, intermediate mid. To the left, we put two sublevels below, in this case, novice high and novice mid. Now Lori will show us some specific examples. Thanks so much, Bill. So we're gonna take a little step back and I'm gonna give you just a bit of background information about this thematic unit. And then we'll dive into some of the rubrics that um, I used, um, that I created and tailor-made for this unit with the uh, templates that we just talked about. So this is a thematic unit about Colombia and the natural wonders that exist in that country. We talk a little bit about the Zona Cafetera. This is the coffee growing region in Colombia. We talk a lot about the flora and fauna of Colombia. We are looking at environmental issues and those two themes, by the way, are year long for this particular course. This is a sixth grade course. Um, they have been studying Spanish since kindergarten. The sixth grade is focused on animals and environmental issues. So it fits right into that theme. And then we finish the unit with a viewing of the movie Encanto. So to give you a sense for some of the tasks that we work on, this is an interpretive reading and viewing task. Uh, these are authentic images that were taken in Colombia on the roadside. Students read the text, they look at the animals, and we really talk a little bit about what some of the animals are, where they are, where they live, their biomes, their regions. So this is to give you a sense for some of the tasks that, that happened prior to the summative performance tasks. So then we're gonna move into these summative performance tasks. And of course we begin with the interpretive task. So the interpretive task for our students uh, is I can interpret the characters of the film Encanto by categorizing the different gifts of each character in a chart. So at this point I say to myself, rubric or no rubric? And that's a question you ask of yourself when you're working with assessments 
Do you, is a rubric something that would support students learning? Is it appropriate to the task? In this case, the answer is no. So I go a different direction. And so for the interpretive task, uh, students again are viewing the film in canto and we want to get at whether they understand the different gifts um, that all of the characters possess. And so we start by asking them to fill out this graphic organizer um, with the questions, what is the character's name? What is their gift? And what do you think about their gift? Now, this last question is a little bit of pre-writing. It's preparing them for the next part of this summative performance task, which is the interpersonal speaking task. Let's have a look at that one. So for the interpersonal task, I ask students to express opinions about which gift might be the best one to have to help them save the flora and fauna of Colombia. And they're going to do this in a short conversation with a classmate. So for this one, I need a rubric. And this is how I take all of the templates and the master documents that um, Bill just shared with you. And I'll show you kind of what that looks like as well. I've chosen a single point rubric for my sixth graders. It works um, really, really well, in my opinion, for interpersonal speaking. And so I go into the master document and I'm looking for the performance indicators for novice high for these kiddos. Again, they have been studying for quite some time. So novice high is, is a comfortable fit for them at this point. I take those performance indicators, I copy, paste them into the rubric, and now I have the beginnings of my rubric for interpersonal speaking. So notice I've got all of these dimensions from the original document. Now they're in my, the beginnings of my rubric. You can see them there. So as Bill referenced, of course, we want to incorporate some cultural elements as well. This task really lends itself to the cultural products and practices. So I go in and pick out that particular piece of the rubric, that performance indicator gets popped into uh, the bottom of the rubric. And there's also some cultural comparisons for this task. So that gets put in as well. I do not have cultural uh, perspectives for this particular task. So that piece, that row of the rubric, I delete that, I cut that right out. Now you can see I have my rubric complete. I've got the cultural products and practices, not the perspectives. And I also have cultural comparisons. Now I have a complete rubric that I can use for the interpersonal speaking task. Now, I often get asked, how do you do that? I mean, actually how, when you're in front of two kids and they're speaking to you, they're speaking right in front of you in the case of an on a actual um, in-person interpersonal speaking task, or even if you're recording students and you're watching a video, it's a lot to process. So very simply, I have a legal size clipboard. I have these two single point rubrics, one to the left, one to the right. I have my kiddos, one to the left, one to the right. Um, I like to color code them as well, just so I don't get confused and make notes on the wrong one. And this is how I will do an interpersonal speaking task. Let's go back to that summative performance, um, suite of summative performance tasks and look at the presentational task. Once again, I'm going to want to use a rubric for this. So let's look at that task. Students are going to, oh, sorry, Bill. Let's pop it back one. Thank you. Students are going to persuade the class that a particular gift is the best one to have to save the flora and fauna of our planet. So we've gone from just Colombia to the planet and they're really having to, to think more broadly. Um, and they're going to create a poster with images and text. And they're going to present that poster to their classmates in a gallery walk. So rubric is definitely in order for this task. And once again, I'll show you how that's constructed using the templates and using the master document. So here we have the presentational um, rubric, the, the template. And I go into presentational communication. I'm looking for the performance indicators for novice high. There they are. I copy, paste them into the column. And now I've got the beginnings of my presentational rubric. I wanna bring those cultural standards back in. Oh, sorry, so I've got all of those. There they are in the rubric. And now we're going to get the cultural standards. 
For this one, I will have students um, looking at cultural perspectives. And so I'm able to bring that in. I copy and paste from standard four master document into their appropriate spaces on the template. I copy and paste from standard five into its appropriate space. And now I have my completed single point rubric, which I will use with my students. And you can see I've got all of those culture standards embedded. This one's a little easier. It's a single student presenting. And so I will once again have a clipboard with just the one rubric on it for each individual student. And I will make notes accordingly. So that's what that looks like in a thematic unit about Colombia and the flora and fauna. Um, and I hope that was helpful. So from here, we're going to revisit today's goals. Um, at the end, we hope that you're able to identify qualities and benefits of rubrics, that you can identify how rubrics provide feedback and assessment of student performance, and that you feel comfortable creating customized rubrics for standards-based performance tasks. I want to once again um, reference, um, Bill was talking about some of the references. So we have an entire collection of references for you um, at the end of this presentation.